I want to welcome everyone to the 21st Century Business Forum. And I'm excited and honored that my guest today is John Maxwell. How you doing, John? Well, it's great to be with you, John. And, and it's great to be with all the people that, of course, are on the podcast. That's a real delight to add value to all of them. So I'm glad to be with you. Thanks for the invitation. John, you are a world-renowned leadership expert, author, and speaker. And right now, we're going through a lot of challenges and change in our world. And you wrote a book called Change Your World. Can you explain how we can change our world right now based on what we're going through? There's a lot we can't control, but what can we control and what can we change? Well, yeah, I will. Um, this has been a very difficult year. And no one likes what has happened. I've, I've talked to thousands of people. I've never had anybody say, boy, this was just a, my favorite year. I just love a pandemic. I, I, you know, it, it, this, is a, this is a very difficult time for all of us. And, and we just naturally don't like it. But when it comes to resilience, one of the things I try to help people understand is if you want to be a resilient leader, uh, you, you can't be a resistant leader. Uh, re, 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 resilience means that I'm going to take what has been handed to me and somehow I'm going to swim upstream. I'm, I, I'm going to, uh, I, I'm not going to uh, resist or, or, or let go. I, I'm not going to, you know, uh, a crisis is the best way I can describe a crisis is it's, it's like a, it's like a detour. Uh, all, all of a sudden, one day, you can't go the way that you always go. And 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 you've got to go a way that you've never gone before, uh, and it's out of the way, and it's not a way that you're comfortable in, You and it's a new way, and it's a longer way. And and so when people say, well, what's happening to me? I say, well, this is a detour year for people. We, 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 we've got interrupted. We, we all of a sudden uh, kind of got knocked out of our comfort zone. In fact, John, one of the things that I teach uh, when, you're, when we're talking about change your world, one of the things I teach is the, is the fact that everything that you want, everything I want, everything that we need, okay, if, if we want it and we need it, everything that I want and, and need, but I don't have it, I don't have it, but I want it, I need it, you want it, you need it, but you don't have it. Everything you want or need that you don't have is outside of your comfort zone. Uh, if it was inside our comfort zone, we'd already have it. So, but, but, but we, but we didn't want to, we didn't want to be disturbed. And so we just said, well, you know, I, I, I would like that, but it's not, I'm no, I don't want to jump the fence. I, I don't want to do that. And so we stay where we are. Well, what COVID-19 has done, it's, it's been an incredible blessing in the fact that it's, it's knocked all of us out of the comfort zone. It, there's, there's not one person in America that would just say, you know, life is just as it's always been this year. It's, you know, no, no, everybody's had a change. Everybody's uh, had to do something differently. I, I love it when people say, when do I get a return to normal? You don't. Uh, the, the, the normal that you and I know and, and knew is, is not possible anymore. And, and so uh, many years ago, I realized I can't change what happens to me. I mean, COVID-19 is not a problem. A problem is something you can fix. Uh, COVID-19 is a fact of life. You, you don't, you know, you don't fix a fact of life. It's just a fact of life. So what I know is it's, it's not what happens to me. It's what happens in me. That is the major change. And, and, and so I, I, I can't control COVID-19, but I can control John Maxwell. And, and the moment that I take responsibility to lead my life and to choose my attitude all of a sudden, there's possibilities of something positive that's going to happen in, in my life. And I think that's just absolutely huge right now. In fact, I think three years from now, John, the question I'm going to be asking in 2023 is what did you do during COVID? Because I think that determines so, I mean, I'm going to have people tell me, well, it was during COVID that I adjusted and, and, uh, and, and shifted and, and, uh, I, I learned things I had never learned before and, and I became teachable and I, I became creative and, and it was a very good year. And then there are going to be other people who say it was a terrible year. And, and the difference is going to be 
not COVID-19. The difference is going to be my response to COVID-19. And so it's our response to bad things that determines whether bad things become good things or whether bad things become worse things. And so change your world is all about the fact I'm not, I didn't, I, I didn't say change the world that, that no one can do that. But I, I said, how about just taking care of your little piece of the pie? How about taking care of where you are and what you're doing right now and where you're living and who your friends are and become a positive change there? So anyway, you know, you ask questions. I began to be a teacher real quick, but, but that's kind of, I, I, that's not the short way of looking at it. That's kind of the long way of looking at it. <laughs> That's great, John. So where can we start by changing our world? Well, you start by changing yourself. Yeah, so, we, we, you know, so, so often I'm asked, what is my greatest leadership challenge? Because that's the world that I live in and teach so much. And, and when they ask me what my greatest leadership challenge is, John, I always give them the same answer. The greatest challenge I have as a leader isn't leading other people. It's leading me. I, I'm, I am always my greatest challenge. It's, I mean, if, if, it, I'll, if I just say, have to lead you and Julio over there, I just say, okay, guys, here's what you need to do. And, and I just kind of point you to the mountain and say, get going. And, and you know, but, but, but I, have to, I have to lead me first. And leading me is not as easy because it's more than words. It's actions. It's, it's example. And uh, it's easier to say words than, than to do what you're saying. And so, you know, I, I tell people you know, in an amusing way, if I had to kick the person most responsible for my problems, I wouldn't be able to sit down for a week. You know, it, it's, you know, it's me. So when people say, well, I want to transform or change my world, I said, well, where do I start? I said, well, you start with you. In fact, I was doing a leadership conference a few years ago, and I had a kid that was working on his MBA, and he came to me during a, a break, and and he said, "Wow, I love what you're doing." He said, "But I'm I'm working on my master's in business," and and he said, "Honestly, he said, I love all these leadership principles, but but I don't have anybody to lead." He said, uh, "Where do I start?" I said, "Well, start with yourself. Apply them to you. You you practice them. You do them." And then if you do them and practice them, guess what? You, you know, then you could be an example for others too. So uh, when we started, uh, we started transformation of countries seven years ago. We started with Guatemala. And uh, when, when, we, when we go in to do transformation of countries, we go only by the invitation of, of the president of the country. And we go vet them and get buy-in from the top leaders. And so when, 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 we, when we started the movement of transformation, uh, our first theme was transformation begins with me. And so, you know, a, a movement isn't a movement because a mass of people join it in the beginning, you know, uh, only a few people join it. You know, ma mass movements aren't mass in the beginning. They only become mass when there's a cause that's worthy of that. So I just say, start with yourself. And, 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 and the way to start with yourself, John, is through good values. And uh, our, our, all of our transformation change your world, thinking, teaching, writing, resources are all based on values. And, and what we've learned is this, very simple. And, and by the way, we've done, we've done these transformation tables now in several countries and we have millions of people that have gone through them. So we, we've got this, we, we've really learned how to do this. And here's what we've discovered, that when people learn good values and then they live them, they learn them first, then they live them, they become more valuable. They become more valuable to themselves. They become more valuable to their family. They become more valuable to their neighbor. And, and it's, it's what I call the values lift. Good values lift people. And we've lost our way. We've lost our way in America. We've lost our way, period. We, 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 and, and the loss is, is in values. And, and I know that, and I understand that. So change your world begins with me uh, living out, learning and living out good values. And then I have the uh, moral authority and credibility to help others do the very same thing. So that's, that's kind of how it starts. John, you and I did a keynote together, actually, where I spoke after you. And I got a chance to hear you speak. And you talked about how a crisis reveals a lot about who you are as a leader. Can you talk about what a crisis reveals? Well, no doubt about it. You, you see, what a crisis does, the worst of times 
either brings out the worst in people or, or the best in people. It doesn't allow us to be neutral. You, in a crisis, you can't sit on the fence. You, you have to take action. You have to lead. You have to declare something. And, and I say a crisis separates the players from the pretenders. And, and in fact, when, I, when I'm doing leadership with or leadership organizations, I tell them, it's, this is a great time for you to find out who your real leaders are. Because you never really know who your real leaders are because of what they say. You know what, who your real leaders are by what they do during a very difficult time. I, I was mentored by John Wooden. And, and, of course, he was the great coach for UCLA. Fantastic coach, teacher, mentor. And he said something interesting to me one day. He said, John, he said, I never, at the, at the beginning of the season, that's when coaches uh, select their, their captain of their team. And he said, I never did that at the beginning of the season. I, I would let my players know that I want to watch them play for two or three games before I select the captain. Because he said, John, I wanted to find out during you know the last three minutes of a game when the score was tied. He said, I wanted to find out who my players were and who my pretenders were. I, I wanted to find out who wanted the ball, who wanted to take the responsibility of, of attempting to, to win the game for us. And, and and he said, only after watching them in real game crisis, crucial situations would I find out who my real captain was going to be, who my real leader was going to be. And I, I think that's very true with, with, with the, what we're going through right now. And, and we, we find out, um, we, we find out, for example, we find out the people that are um, emotionally strong uh, because when everyone else is, is kind of bailing and, and quitting and, and uh, are, are kind of, I don't know, uh, led by fear, you, you, you find out the ones who are emotionally strong and say, no, I, you know, this is not easy. But but we can come through this. And so you just kind of watch the people, watch the people in leadership positions. And, and the real leaders will say, Stan, there's a, there's a TV show. I, I thought it was an old TV show, but I found out just the other day that it's on TV again. It was, it's called To Tell the Truth. And, and uh, it, I, I knew it in, you know 30 years ago, and, and I loved it because there would be three contestants, and, 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 and one of them was telling the truth about what he or she did, and the other two were imposters. And there was a panel of three or four people, and, and they would ask questions, and they'd try to find out who was telling the truth. And I, what my favorite part was when they got done asking all the questions, and, and, and they, they all voted, the panel all voted who they thought was the truth teller. They would say, now, will the real and that person stand up? And, you know, all three of them would kind of stand up together, and then one would sit down. They'd go back and forth. Well, is it, is it? And finally, finally, one person's left standing. That's the person that is the is the player. And I thought, you know, during a crisis, we're all playing to tell the truth. And we're all showing who we are. And uh, and and there's no faking it now. You know, you could, you know, in in practice, you can fake it. In the game, you can't. You you, you got to produce. And so, it's a it's a pretty uh, amazing time. And I think that. Uh, it's an it's it's a time when when you're going to find out who who leads well and who who doesn't lead well. John, you wrote a book, Leader Shift, talking about embracing change. How can we embrace change right now? And what changes do we need to embrace? Well, yeah, I love that book. In fact, that book, Leader Shift, is very popular right now. In fact, uh, it's always done very well. But it, since COVID hit, it's it's become a bestseller, and it's become bestseller because the whole thesis of leader shift is that the greatest leaders are able to make adjustments. Uh, the word that we're using right now, at COVID-19 is pivot. You know, can you, how quickly can you pivot? How quickly can you change direction? How quickly can you make that turn? And when I wrote leader shift, of course, there wasn't a COVID-19. I, I didn't not only know about, it, I didn't anticipate it at all. But I did know that to be a good leader, you had to be flexible and adjustable and, and agile. And so the book is all about not uh, being, again, resistant, but, but being open to learning, growing, uh, changing, becoming aware. And so I talked and I think it, it, I wrote the book two and a half years ago, but I think I had 11 or 12 shifts that you need to make in your uh, leadership 
And, uh, you know, for, for example, I, I think the first one is you, you have to shift from being from going solo to being a conductor. Uh, you know, solo is all about me. Being a conductor is all about the orchestra. And and I got to I, I, I no longer am the star, but I help other people. I shine the light on on others. And uh, wow, uh, that that that's that's a huge shift. In fact, I, I received it was after I wrote the book Leadership from my inner circle. I received a, a beautiful Mont Blanc pen that was it's a highlighter pen. And, and they put on the side of the pen, you highlight our lives. And, and I thought, wow, I, I love that. Well, th that's, that's a shift that, that uh, you have to make. You know, I, I talk about the shift from being goal oriented to being growth oriented, you know, to, to understand there's something beyond me just setting a, a tangible goal and having a finish line that, that I need to constantly expand and grow myself and, and, and become, you know, become a more, um, uh, more expansive in, in, in my life and in my growth and in my leadership. I, I, I talk about uh, making the shift from career to calling and, and, you know, career again, if, if, if I have a career, there is a finish line. I, I can retire. But calling is, is, is much bigger. You don't, you can't retire from a, a calling. And, and I talk in that chapter about the difference, but the key is John constantly helping people to be flexible Whenever a leader has to uh, is resistant, whatever leader is 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 uh, it's it's kind of my way or the highway. That leader's in real trouble uh, because it's it, there's always a new way. In fact, one of my one of my teachings is you know there's always an answer. There always is, and, and in fact, there's usually more than one answer. And so when when I'm kind of in a dead end situation. If I think that there's always an answer, I'll, I'll, I'll keep, I'll hang in that game because there's an answer. I just got to find it. If I think that there's not an answer, I'll quit. And, you know, no one, no one ever quit their way to the top. So, so I, I, you know, this whole ability to be adjustable, to shift quickly, to pivot quickly is very important in, in the success of a leader's life. I love that, John. You wrote a book, The 360 Leader. Is that a book that's appropriate for right now in terms of, what people are going through and how they can lead. Yeah, the, 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 well, the 360 leader book. You know, I wrote that book because I would do leadership conferences and I would have people come up to me and say, "I, I just love this material you have. I love the teaching, but I, but I, I'm not. I don't have a leadership position." And and so it's kind of like, "Wow, I love all the stuff you're saying, but there, I can't do anything with it." And and I I realized that leadership is influence. It's not title or position. And so I said, I've got to write a book that empowers people who don't have, quote, a leadership title or position to, to influence people around them and, and to lead. And so therefore, it was, I, it was, it's the book 360 Degree Leader. Interestingly enough, John, when I, um, you know, it, people probably don't know this, but as a writer, uh, I write the book, but I don't get to pick the title. The, the publisher picks the title. And uh, so I remember when I wrote the book, I thought, oh, I know what I want this title to be. And I wanted to be entitled, follow me, I'm right behind you, because I just love that expression. So I went into my publishing meeting and said, oh, I've got a great title. And they looked at it and said, that's really good. And then they, they went to the 360 degree leader because you could brand it better. But anyway, it, so, but here's what's interesting about that. And, and that book became, that was voted the business book of the year in America that year when it was published. But what makes that book unique is I talk about how to lead from the middle. How, how do I influence people that are above me? In fact, in the book, if I remember correctly, again, when you write 80 some books, you, you know, you can't remember everything, but, 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 uh, uh, <laughs> As I remember, there were nine ways to influence people above you and seven way, ways to influence people beside you. And I think maybe seven ways to influence people beneath you. So that's that's where that 360 degree idea kind of came from. But but the point being um, that that it really empowered people to lead where they are. I, I, I It wasn't like, don't wait until you get a leadership position to lead. Lead now and you'll get a leadership position. And, and it really took a, a, a backdoor approach to leadership that really helped a, a lot of people. So, yeah, that was a, that's been a life-changing book for a, a lot of people, especially people that, 
felt that they wanted to leave, but they didn't know if they could because they didn't have the, the position. I love the whole 360 approach because you can make a difference where you are. It's about influencing people from the position and place of where you are, knowing that you can make an impact. And that really dovetails to change your world because anyone can change their world. Anyone can have an impact Wherever, yeah. on the world around them. And so I think those two fit really well together. Yeah, that's a that is a great observation. That that really is. I I, I in the you know in the book on change your world, and the people that watch you know your podcast, I want to encourage you to get this book because uh, you know people ask me what my greatest book is, and, and I always laugh. I say, "What's the book I'm writing right now?" And I always feel that way. But all my life I was born to write Change Your World. And I, I'm I I'll have to say that it was an incredible fulfilling experience. And and we believe that there are going to be literally uh millions of people uh, start to change their world because this book is kind of a a guideline of how to do it. And if if I can take just a moment to kind of give the essence of the book, because I think I want people to know it. Uh, it begins very simply by saying, do you really want to make a difference in, in your world? And, and if you do, in fact, in the first chapter, the first few pages, I basically say, if you want to make a difference in, in your world, this book is for you. And if you don't want to make a difference in, the, in, in your world, you know, uh, sell it in the flea market. You know what I mean? Get rid of the book. You know, because the, this is just for people who really want to really want to look at their life and say, I am making a positive difference in my neighborhood and in, in with people I work with in my family, in my community. And the essence of the book, as you get into it, is that if you want to change your world, it's going to be done through values. Now, this is very important, John. Uh, and then let me tell you where I learned this. Back, If you go back to 2000, when, when they had the corporate scandals and, and a lot of distrust, remember Enron and, and the companies that just absolutely fleeced the people in their company. And I was at that time a, a writer for Time Warner. And so Larry Kirschbaum, the CEO of the writer of, of the book division, called me up to New York City and said, John, I want you to write a book on business ethics based on what's happening in the corporate world. And I said, well, I can't do that. He said, why not? I said, because there's not any, there's no such thing as business ethics. And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, there, there's, you know, there, there, there's just ethics. And, and if you have them, the good news is it works in business. So happy day. You know, it works in business, but it works in your family. And if you don't have them, it's not going, it's not going to work anywhere. You can't compartmentalize ethics. And, and so he, he, he said, well, can you write it? And I said, well, I don't know because, uh, you know, there are not very many absolutes in, in, in our country. And I, I don't know. I don't know if I can or not. But I said, let me try. The bottom line is I wrote the book based on the golden rule. Treat others as you want to be treated because the golden rule is recognized with every religion and every culture in the world. Our research team found that out. And, and what happened is that book was very successful. And all of a sudden it hit me that I didn't try to change something legally. I didn't try to change a law. I just tried to change a heart. I just, I, instead of going on the outside, I went to the inside and said, would you embrace the value of treating others like you'd like to be treated? If the answer is yes, guess what? Then, then you're, you're, you're going to live out a, a beautiful value that's going to help you and help others. That was a turning point for me. If, that was in 2000. That's when I said, if I really want to change, help people change their world, it's going to have to be around values. It's not going to have to be around laws or legalism or you should or, you, you know, you can't force people. This has got to be something that they just say, well, no, I, I want to. So then we began to... Uh, ask ourselves what values do they need to learn and, and live and, and we came away with 25 values that the people if they learn them and live them they'll, they'll be not only valuable to themselves but about value another so this book is all about values and it's all about doing values um in a uh in a small group because life change happens not in a large group with a lecture it happens when you get a have a half a dozen people around the table and you're talking about each one of these values and what you know about it, how you do it well, how you don't do it well, how things you need to have changed. That it's that interaction that makes the difference. So it's, in fact, I have a chapter in the book called uh, uh, you change your world one table at a time. And, and, and you do. And, and, and what you discuss around that table 
our values. Let me give you a perfect example since I talked about Guatemala earlier. Just last week, I was in Guatemala. And I spent, uh, we've been in Guatemala now for seven years. And so we have almost 2 million people that have been in transformation tables. Okay. I'm talking about 2 million in groups of five, six, or seven. And it's changing the country tremendously. And so uh, we have a, a high influence rate there. And, and, and so I was, I was with the president. I, I, in fact, I spent one day with the president. I spent one day with his cabinet. I spent uh, uh, some time with the, the Supreme Court. I spent some time um, uh, with the Attorney General, uh, uh, just major leaders in the country. The largest company in Central America, uh, uh, Progresso, a large cement company. But anyway, I spent that whole day with major leaders. And then the next day, they took me to a halfway house where these uh, kids, these teenagers, were in major trouble in the law. It was a prison. And, and they're, they're major trouble. They were almost all related in the gangs and, and, and murder, attempted murder, et cetera. And um, they wanted me to go see these kids because for a, a year they've been using our transformation tables and values and they're getting better and they're changing right before the prisoners, uh, the, the, the staff's eyes and they're, they're seeing a, a major pivot. And so I went to see, and there were about 200 of them that were in this program. It was a wonderful day. What was beautiful is, is, is there was a guy named Alexander who spoke, and he was in for attempted murder. And he spoke about how that he had never learned values. He didn't know values. And, and, and how the, every time he would learn another value, how it was, began to change his life. And he was very kind of emotional. And, 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 and he just said, I just, I, I, I'm a new person now. And, and, and what they do is they put them through this program and then they, they release them. And, and uh, this is amazing. They, I, I met 28 uh, ex-prisoners and they came back for this day. And it, what's interesting is, is they all have, have stayed out of prison and done very well. And, and 70% of the people that leave prison come back to prison. And so it's kind of like goodbye today. I'll see you tomorrow. And, and they go back and they do the same stuff and get in trouble again. And yet these 28 that have gotten out have none of them have come back. And so Alexander talked about how his life was changed through these values. And when he was finished, I happened to have a, a sweater that day with the C Y W change your world uh, 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 on it. And while he was talking, when he got up, I thought I got to give him my sweater. So I took my sweater off and I, Gave to him. I said, I want you to have this sweater. It's mine. I want you to have it. You go change your world. And he put it on. He cried. And the place went crazy. People stood up. They clapped and they cheered. They went nuts. And 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 then he he left me all of a sudden. I, thought, I wonder where, where he went. He went down and he came back up with a T-shirt that he had made just the week before of all the values he had learned that had transformed his life. And needless to say, that was an amazing, amazing uh, day for me. And I tell that story to all of your viewers on the podcast because this is what the book's all about. If, if, if you want to see people around you that maybe like these guys are almost like, are, 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 can they ever turn? Can they ever, can they ever make a, a, a positive difference in society? It, 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 what's beautiful is this book is a book that teaches you all about the tables, all about the values and how to do them. And then what's great is we have online help for people. We have an app that everybody can go to and, 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 and we walk with them because we, we know that this is life-changing material, but we want to make sure that they have somebody that guides them. And if they have questions, they can go and get questions. And every one of your viewers, I want to challenge you all to not only get the book, Change Your World, but I want to challenge you all to facilitate a, a, a transformation table. Go get you six or seven people. And, uh, and, and, and go through this uh, transformation training, and I will promise you it'll be one of the most fulfilling things that you ever ever do in your life. And, well, you can tell I'm extremely passionate about it. I mean, I could, I could just keep off talking. I'm... John, you are one of the greatest leadership minds of all time. I really believe that. I want to ask you two more questions as we come to a close in this interview. And one is a personal question. How have you changed during this time? How has COVID impacted you your company, and your team. What have you found out about yourself? Yeah, it's been a great time for me, and it sounds crazy to have a great time in a difficult time, but it, it's, it, it, I probably will wrap up 2020 and say 
for my own personal growth and development, it's been my greatest year. Um, well, we have seven companies. Mark Cole is the CEO of those companies and he runs everything for me. And, and of course it would, it affected every one of our companies like it does people we're talking to here. And so Mark said, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to do what we've always done. We, we're going to keep our values just the way they are. We're going to live them. We're going to take care of our people. And I said, that, you know, we, we, we may all, we may financially go under, but, but we're not going to go bankrupt with values. We just, it's just going to be money. It won't be values. And, and so we, we've stayed the course and, and of course, all of our companies are, 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 are making it. Some are doing much better than others, but we, we've kept our people employed and never, and, and there's an incredible loyalty, but, but here's, what's beautiful is the, it's one thing to write a book about values. It's one thing to teach a lesson about values. And then it's other, another thing to have your values tested. Uh, values that have not been tested cannot be trusted. And so, you know, if, if I have values that haven't been tested, it's how do I know? How do I know that I really believe that until I've been pressed? And it's, you know, it's either, you know, do or die on it. And so it's been a fabulous year for me, John, because uh, I've, 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 I've just, I have more confidence than I've ever had before, more conviction than ever before that what I know and what I believe and what I teach and what I live is true. And, and, and it's kind of like, wow, if I, if, if I found that to be true during COVID-19, you know, bring it on. I don't know what's going to happen next, but I know this, I, I'm not going to doubt those values because they've been tested. And so it's been a great year because of that. And John, my last question is this, what are three actions that people can take as they move to create a great year in 2021 as an entrepreneur, a business leader, or anyone what are three things that they can do practically to have a great year? Well, that's a great, I love that question because it's an app applying question. And, you know, I, I, I do a whole teaching on action attraction. And, and basically the thesis on that teaching was you attract nothing to what you want until you act upon what you want. That it's the action that attracts people. It's not the intention. So the first thing I would tell people is, is leave the world of good intentions and, and go to the world of good actions. Uh, good intentions are the most overrated English words in the English language. I mean, no one, no one has ever been changed by good intentions and it, it, it's, you've got to, you've got to act on it. And so I, so that, that would be my first thing is, is live an intentional life and whatever good intentions you have, you know, take actions. The second thing that I, I would say to people is um, a decision to take action still isn't a decision. And I, I watched that happen with people. my father when I was growing up used to give the little riddle, you know, five frogs on a log. Four decide to jump off. How many frogs are left? I'd say one. He'd say, no, five are left. What do you mean five? You said four decided to jump off. Yes, but just because you decide to jump doesn't mean you're jumping. And again, I, I know a lot of people that are saying, well, you know, I, these are, you know, these are New Year's resolutions. I'm, I, I'm making these New Year's resolutions right now. Well, you know, it only takes about 18 days to lose that resolution because you haven't yet taken action on it. So just as good intentions is a, um, uh, is, is a detriment to good actions, I think it's also true in, in, in this case, too. And, and then the last thing, as I would say, is, is to them is, don't have a trying attitude, have a doing attitude. And, 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 you know, a lot of times people say, boy, you know, I, what I love about them is they, they really try. And, and I, I, you know, I don't think trying is very good. I, I, I trying means I'm going to try it. If it doesn't work, I quit. Uh, you know, if, if I have a trying attitude, I'm asking myself, can I, but if I have a doing attitude, I'm asking myself, how can I, and, and how can I, removes the excuse. You already said you're going to do it. You're already determined to do it. Now you're, you're just asking what's the, how's the best way for me to do it. I'm going to do it. You know, can I basically say, well, okay, I'll try it, but if it doesn't work, I, I'm, I'm going to slip out. And so for all of the people that watch the, you know, the podcast, just remember those three things. And, and again, so many times victory comes when somebody presents to us something that, that we can do that when we do it, it really makes a difference. And, and again, go back to change your world. I want every one of, of, of you watching, I want you to order the book. 
and and I want you to uh, read it. And then I want you to become active. I want you to uh, begin to facilitate a, a, a transformation table. And again, you can go to apps of ours and, and we'll walk with you. We, I mean, we'll interact with you. We'll help you get there. But just think what would happen if every person, John, would this year do a transformation table. And, and think of, you know, the six or eight that they have and, and, and the good that would come out of it. Think how you would be fulfilled in your life by just saying, I, I know this. I'm starting to make a difference in, in my community and the people around me. So anyway, uh, hopefully that kind of helps people. Uh, you know, what we're supposed to leave our footprints in the sands of time, John, not our butt prints in the sands of time. You know? So, you know, I guess we're saying get off, get off your butt and get on your feet and start moving. Well, that concludes today's business forum. I want to thank you, John, for joining us today. Thank you, friend. Good to be with you, John. Always good to be with Julio. Take care. And thank you to each one of you for watching the 21st Century Business Forum. Join us next month where I will interview Renee Malborn. She's the author of Blue Ocean Strategy. And also a big thanks to our sponsors for making this possible. Again, I'm your host, John Gordon, and I'll see you next month. <music>